Thanks, Stephen. You're listening to the Radio Ammo Breakfast, only on Kiwi. Well, did you take part in E-Day? Well, if you didn't, you kind of missed out because it was actually on the weekend. Um, E-Day is the day where all around the country uh, you've got the opportunity to drop off uh, some of your old electronic waste, uh, computer waste. Often it can be um, hard to work out how to get rid of uh, old computers, and especially as time goes on, we've got more and more of them uh, lying around. Well, E-Day did happen on Saturday, so to find out how it went down, and also about this uh, charity auction uh, that's on Trade Me at the moment, about some of the more interesting e-waste that was uh, actually dropped off, Lawrence Swimfer from E-Day joins us on the line this morning. Good morning, Lawrence. Good morning. Now, uh, last year, E-Day 2008, actually went really, really well. You had over 16,000 cars come and drop stuff off. How did it go this year? Well, it was pretty much almost the same. Uh, We had more communities involved. Um, We had about 38 uh, communities as opposed to 31 last year. Um, But interestingly, the number of cars about the same. At our last count, it was 16,500, which is almost exactly the same as last year. And the... The amount of waste dropped off. Um, last year it was 946 tonnes, and this year it was 966 tonnes. So uh, pretty consistent. Pretty significant, isn't it, that oh. all this e-waste is kind of hanging around people's houses? Absolutely. It's amazing the amount of stuff that comes out. And, uh, you know, we're talking about equipment, some of it, you know, 30 years old. So it's been sitting around in someone's cupboard for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So um, how, how much do we know, um, you know, is... Is, is actually still out there. I mean, is that just is that an impossible sort of thing to work out? Yeah. Well, we did a, a survey a couple of years ago and uh, estimated that at that time there were about sort of ten million um, devices with cathode ray tubes, and now that the real nasties actually is the the cathode ray tube monitor. Um, now we haven't got anywhere near sort of dealing with all of those yet, um, but of course we're still importing this stuff pretty fast. So. We're importing about a million devices every year of new devices coming in. So uh, what we're collecting in our E-Day, we think, is maybe about 10% or 15% wow. of just what we're importing each year. Yeah. So I think there's still a, it's, it's, it's a huge issue for New Zealand and, and for the world, actually. Because as, as time goes on, uh, more and more equipment, I suppose, becomes obsolete. And, um, and people just don't know what to do with it, do they? Do they don't know how to reuse it, especially if it's broken? That's really what it, what our E Day is about. It's, it's it is an education day. It's uh, while we do something practical, like get rid of people, help them empty out their cupboards. Um, it's really about alerting people to you know wh- the issues around it, and it's a, about not taking it to the landfill, not taking it to the dump because of the hazardous substances that are in computers. What um, kind of things are inside computers? Yeah, well, we've got a lot of lead. Um, you know, it's about in a cathode ray tube monitor, a normal sort of you know these big clunky heavy monitors. There's about two to three kilograms of lead um, that is embedded in the glass. Um, there's mercury, um, zinc was uh, in the uh, plastics. There's a, a brominated flame retardant that goes into the plastics. And now hmm. all of these substances sort of got a track record of sort of you know being dangerous to the environment and human health. So uh, it's a really dumb thing to go and put all the stuff back, bury it back in, in the earth. So when, especially when you can do other stuff with it. And I think that's the the good thing, the other part of the message is, look, there's valuable metals uh, in computers, so why don't we extract them and reuse them? Let's well, okay. make, make no, new things. So a bunch of it was dropped off at the various drop points around the country on, on Saturday. What happens to it now? Yeah, it's all, um, it was all packed into containers, uh, about 150 containers, um, which are all being uh, transported up to Auckland and uh, is being tested. The, the hazardous uh, material is being separated from the rest of it, and all the hazardous material gets sent off to South Korea, uh, where they've got plant there that will actually extract, uh, that actually breaks down all the materials and extracts all the metals. And uh, actually, I've actually seen one of their factories that, that sort of pours gold ingots out the end when it extracts all the little gold contacts, <laughs> you know, tiny little amounts of gold in every computer, and it can extract all that, and uh, you know, and that gold can go and be used for jewellery or something like that at the end of the day. So are we sure that it's going going to the right place and they're actually doing the right thing with it? Because there has been controversies in the past, say, with other recycling things in New Zealand where it heads off to China or wherever, and we find that children are, are playing with it. Yes. The, the, the export of hazardous waste is closely controlled by the Ministry for Economic Development under a, a thing called the Basel Permit. And uh, anyone t- trying to, you know, wanting to export has to have one of these permits to export it. And it's an intergovernmental agreement. It can only go to another OECD country. 
can only go to another country that has signed up to this this Basel Convention. So uh, it is actually South Korea is a a very good environment actually to be sending our e-waste because they got very good. In fact, they're ahead of New Zealand in terms of their whole waste management pr- practices and processes. Um, it's a they deal with it very very well. And of course, they've also got a big manufacturing industry that can use all the materials that are extracted. So uh, it is it's a very good environment um, to be able to to be sending it to. But. I'm talking look with uh, Lawrence Wimfer from E-Day, uh, which happened on the weekend where uh, electronic waste is collected all around the country. Lawrence, what, was was it a bit of a geek's paradise at some of these collection points, you know, for, for people to go through, picking through it and um, and picking out bits that might actually work? Yes. Well, we, we don't sort of let that happen, really, in a way, because it's a bit dangerous on the day. We've got cars and forklifts whizzing around and things, so... Uh, we do have a few people like to come along and say, oh, look, I'd li-. I had one guy came to me and said, look, I'd really like to go and find a charger, a new charger for my cell phone. Yeah. And I said, well, where are you going to start, mate? <laughs> and you're probably going to get killed by a forklift and trying to you know, dig through all the gear. So we, we basically don't let people sort of do that on the day. <clears throat> um, but the some of the classics and the collectible sort of type material, we do have people, uh, for, uh, some people come from the computer society, some of them just computer buffs, and we say, look, keep an eye out for anything that has sort of collectible or antique value um, and we might better put that up on Trade Me. Well Trade Me have put up a uh, been a good supporter and have put up a charity auction site for us. So um, so we've had what we call them as spotters. So they've spotted material and uh, we've already got the first lot um, already listed, the, the collection from Wellington we were listing on the day. Um, but I haven't seen all the stuff from around the rest of the country yet. Uh, it's a bit of a, a bit of a problem usually. People get too enthusiastic usually, and you end up with mountains of sort of collectibles. And of course, uh, we don't need that much stuff. Yeah. Do you collect um, bits and bobs yourself? No, no, no. I'm not a I'm not a collector. I'm, I tend to, but don't ask my wife about that because I tend to be more of a hoarder. <laughs> I think it's probably more of a. <laughs> correct um, description than a, than a collector. Because I'm just looking now at um, uh, the auction on Trade Me. People can go along to um, eday.org.nz and they'll find the link to uh, the Trade Me auction up there at the moment. There is some, uh, man, there's some, some long forgotten stuff up here. Uh, a lot of Commodore 64 uh, stuff, which was the old um, computer from the, uh, from the 80s, I suppose. And uh, uh, many people around New Zealand had Commodore 64s uh, in their houses, yes, they were, they were kind of like the the kind of first computer, I think, for a lot of people. I, I think that's what we found. The people that last year we ran this auction as well, and uh, you know, we got I got some fa- fabulous sort of emails from the people that have you know got this and said, "Oh, I've now got what was my first computer," <laughs> you know. And even though it may not work, but some of them found, "Hey, it still works!" It's yeah. incredible, you know, I'm a computer that still works from you know, thirty years ago uh, is. Uh, so yeah, a lot of it, it, there are people that have quite a strong nostalgic attachment to their, you know, their their Apple IIe or their, their the ZX eighty one is one of that was a very popular one actually. That's um, from I see that. about nineteen eighty, I think they came from. Yeah. That looks like a um, just like well, no, I could look at the picture more closely, but it almost looks like a little um, little laptop, but it's probably not. But it's it's it was amazing back in those days they did make very small computers. They were they were just very small screens and very well they, of course they they were very closely linked with the calculators you know the calculators sort of merged and you know, they became sort of computers really so it grew out of the calculator into the computer and interestingly we're going back to sort of the you know with the, with the iPhone and all that it's going back to to where it started really with with a calculator looking device yeah. A larger device. I see that there is there are a few cell phones up there as well. I guess these were considered bricks, I suppose, an, an old uh, yellow mo- Motorola. Yes, that's right. There, there were there were not, not quite the originals, but um, they do go do go back away. Yeah. Someone says a good conversation piece. Well, that's yes. I think that's what what they're about, really. I think it's sort of, and even some of our young kids probably have never seen these things before. They didn't. They don't know where it all started. Exactly. So, as you say, a lot of uh, a lot of apples in there as well. Some very old um, Macintoshes. Um, so, so people can go along there and bid. And, and who's the benefactor in this? Oh, one? We, all the proceeds go back to help with the costs of running E Day. So, uh, in fact, last year I think we 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 generated about two thousand dollars from about seventy items. So, it's actually not a big money spinner, but mm. it sort of it helps. Every little bit helps. That's the nature of E Day. We ask a lot of people to contribute time, um, discounted services, funding to sort of help make E-Day work, and this is just one other little bit of icing on the cake. Are you expecting uh, more and more auctions uh, from the gear around the country to, to keep on popping up over the next few weeks? Oh, yes, absolutely. It's just a matter of transporting it all there. Um, it's all through to Wellington, so it's coming through here, and I've got a real enthusiastic computer buff 
uh, who sort of has actually, uh, well, there's a couple of them actually, one's sort of doing the photography and the other sort of doing the listing and answering the questions when they come in. So, uh, uh, so that, you know, he's going to manage it for us, or they'll manage it for us over the next few weeks. So it'll just take, a, it, it, we've got this first lot up, but um, it will be running progressively over a number of weeks. Excellent. Well, Lawrence, we really do appreciate your time talking about E-Day. Uh, people should go to eday.org.nz and check out uh, the auction link on there as well. Lawrence, until next year, have a good one. Great.